Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect Speculation video. And I want to welcome you to another episode. We are getting very close to Christmas and I want to let you guys know that the folks at Go Collect are going to be doing something really awesome. Leading into the Christmas season, they are going to be doing 12 days of giveaways. And I don't have all the details at this very moment, but I will encourage you to stay tuned to social media so that you can find out the details and get in on the action. And I have a feeling that the sponsors they have lined up are going to deliver some awesome giveaways for you guys, so you do not want to miss that. With that said, in this video, we are going to talk about six blog posts that are presently available on the gocollect.com website. And I hope that you enjoy this episode because there is a little something for everyone in this one. Over the last couple of weeks, we've actually covered several different blog posts that have touched on the Star Wars universe. And this week is like the last few. We're going to talk about Star Wars because Star Wars is hot right now. This week, one of our bloggers takes a look at a series that may be flying under the radar, but you might want to check it out because some of the books in this series have tons of first appearances. And the series that I'm specifically talking about is Star Wars Legacy. And the blogger actually touches on three different comics from this series, Star Wars Legacy, that you may want to check out. The very first book is the first book in the series, that being issue number one. And this book is hot because it actually has multiple first appearances of several different characters. And at present, this book has an FMV of $675 based upon 14 sales for a 9.8. And again, this book has a lot of first appearances. And according to the blogger, if you are going to pick up one of these books, issue number one is the one that you want to check out. Some of the other books that they reference in this blog post contain some minor characters that may or may not take off. But what he does encourage you to do is to be on the lookout for these books in dollar bins because there is a chance that they're still in the dollar bins and you might be able to pick them up for a steal. The blogger specifically in this post talks about Star Wars issue number two as well as Star Wars Legacy issue number 48. The link to this blog post is down in the description. Take a look at it because you want to check out all of the details associated with these three books. So in this speculation series, we don't oftentimes talk about Golden Age comics, but our next blogger does exactly that. He actually casts a light on several Golden Age comics. But here's what's really cool about it. The blogger highlights these books because in some ways they are precursor characters to ones that we are familiar with and in some cases really do enjoy. And so this is a blog post that you may want to check out because I'll be honest, there's a little bit of history here that I wasn't aware of and you might not be either. One of the books that the blogger talks about is Pep Comics issue number 17. And tell me if this sounds familiar to you because this is the first appearance of a character known as the Hangman. This character specifically goes out, seeks out wrongdoers and gives them an opportunity to repent and if not, he punishes them. That sounds a whole lot like a ghost rider to me. The next character that the blogger talks about is a character known as Starman, and he has a cosmic rod 
that allows him to fly and also to manipulate energy. And if you're listening, that may sound a little like several characters, including the Green Lantern. This character, the Starman, had his first appearance in Adventure Comics issue number 61. And according to the data, there are roughly 55 copies of this book on the CGC census, and all of them go for a healthy amount of money. In fact, a 7.5 copy of this book sold in May for $10,000. There are several other Golden Age books that are mentioned in this blog post, and if you have any interest in Golden Age comics or at least reading about the precursors to some characters that you may know and love, this is a blog post that you want to check out. Just recently, we received some news that Kate Bishop is going to be appearing in the Hawkeye movie that is going to be coming out on the Disney Plus streaming service. In fact, some photos of Kate on set with the Hawkeye character from the MCU recently leaked online. And so our blogger is releasing this blog post at a perfect time because he is essentially doing a comparison of the first appearances of Hawkeye versus the Black Widow. And this is actually an ongoing series called 2020 Speculation in which the blogger takes some time to compare two books that are very similar and evaluates the performance of those books using historical data. Now, part of the reason why they decided to do this is because these two characters actually appeared five months apart in 1964 and both of them actually appear in the same title, that being Tales of Suspense. Natasha Romanoff first appeared in issue number 52 and Hawkeye appeared a few months later in Tales of Suspense issue number 57. And I'll be honest with you, this is a solid blog post to look at because it's full of some wonderful data and analysis, but really, this was no match. The Black Widow clean Clint's clock, no doubt about it. But I will encourage you to take a look at this blog post because it is well written. And as I mentioned, this is an ongoing series that kind of asks the question, should you invest in these books? And if you did, here's how those books would have performed. It is a really solid blog post. Check it out. So I want to read you a list. And I want you down in the comment section to let me know if you know what these artists have in common. The first name, Jack King Kirby. Next up, Dave Cockrum, Gil Kane, John Byrne, Jim Lee, and Jim Steranko. Any guesses? If you haven't been able to figure it out, because this is not an easy one, all of the aforementioned folks were artists at one point in time or another on the X-Men. Our next blogger actually does a solid job of looking at several different creators that have worked on the X-Men over the years. And, and they actually talk a little bit about what is happening with the values associated with the original artwork that was created by these artists during their stints on the X-Men. And I will tell you, there are a couple of surprises as you go through the data and you look at how one artist, you know, uh, their, their panels and pages compare to another in terms of values, there are a few shocking moments. And so if you are into the X-Men or if you are into any of the creators that I just mentioned, this is a blog post that you may want to check out this next blog post is all about Venom. And I'll tell you, I was not the biggest Venom fan. 
Uh, our blogger actually does a solid job of kind of walking us through the history of Venom from his creation to how he is currently being worked on by Donny Cates. And as I mentioned, I was not a huge fan of Venom in those early days when he was squaring off against Spider-Man. And, and I just finished reading uh, the King in Black issue number one earlier today. Oh, incredible. If, if you haven't read that, I encourage you to read it. If you are not reading uh, the current run of Venom, you have to read it because it is some of the best stuff that is out there right now. And as I mentioned, our blogger does a really solid job of kind of walking us through the history. And he made some of the same points that I'm making right now that Venom today is incredible. The link down in the description. So here's the question. What happens to the value of comics associated with villains that make an appearance in like a TV show and then like die or like go away. What happens to the value of those comics? That is literally what our next blogger takes a look at. And the blogger specifically looks at villains that have appeared in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show. And I'm not going to walk you through each one of the villains that the blogger mentions because I want you to read the blog post for yourself, but I will highlight a couple of the villains for you. The first character that the blogger looks at is the absorbing man, Crusher Creel, who had his first appearance in Journey Into Mystery issue number 114 in 1965. Now what's interesting about this book is that it had a little bit of a spike in 2014 when Creel first appeared on the TV show. And immediately after, it went into a little bit of a nosedive. But over the last couple of years, the last three years or so, the book has actually started to rebound. And I can tell you that that does not appear to be uh, the case for the other villains books that are mentioned in this blog post. Next up on the list is Blizzard. And we are specifically talking about the Donald Gill version of Blizzard who had his appearance in Iron Man issue number 223 in 1987. Now, this book does not have a whole lot of sales data. In fact, there have only been five sales of 9.8s over the last 10 years and these books have essentially been sold for somewhere between 24 and $50. There is one other villain that is mentioned in this blog post by the name of Hive, and I will allow you guys to check out the blog post to see how that book has performed over time. The link is down in the description. So there you have it. We have reached the end of another episode. And as I mentioned, there was a little something for everyone in this one. And before we wrap up, I want to encourage you guys to make sure that you check out the Go Collect Swag Shop. And if you use my discount code Reggie, you can actually save yourself 10% on your purchases. And I will tell you, they are coming out with some awesome swag so you definitely want to stay tuned for that and if you enjoyed this video i want to encourage you to leave a comment behind so that we can mix it up in the comment section hit the thumbs up button and tune in next week when we get to do this all over again